number 66, calculate the delta H for the process, and then they give us this equation. So we need to find the delta H for CO3O4, which will yield three COs and two O2s from the following information. And they give us two equations with delta H values. This is a Hess's law problem, right? We've done a couple of Hess's law problems already. So if you want like a full in-depth explanation, you know, go back and do those. This one maybe will kind of pick up the pace a little bit, all right? But it's the same type of idea. I'm going to say that I want the equation that I want. I want this one, right? So I'm just gonna rewrite that just so I could view it better. And in this case, I don't care about the states. Nobody has time to write these. And it just gets a little messy. So I'm just gonna say CO3, O4, and then three COs plus two O2s, all right? So let's get started. When you are doing your Hess's law problems, right? Only look at one uh, substance at a time in the equation that you want and go from left to right. So the first thing that I'm gonna be looking for is I'm gonna be looking for this CO3O4. It's literally the first compound in my equation. And when I'm looking for this, I don't care about this or this. Zone in on this, okay guys? So, I just uh, get some information before I go to my two equations. How many CO3s04s do I want? There's a one here, so I just want one of these. And what side is it? It's on the left side of the yield sign, right? So I just say one L. Now I go to the two equations that they give me with the delta H values, and let's just call this equation number one, and let's just call this equation number two. Out of these two equations, you're going to find the compound that you're looking for. So which equation has the CO3 O4? Which one do you think, guys? Yeah, it's equation number two. It's right here, right? Here's the CO3 O4. The first equation does not have this compound. Now let's just get a tally. How many CO3 O4s do I have? I have one in this case. There's no coefficient but it's on the right side of the yield sign. So what's not matching up? The sides, I want it on the left and here they give it to me on the right. How am I gonna get it on the left? When you see that the sides are not matching, all you have to do is switch the equation or flip the equation. Basically, you're going to write it backwards. This is going on the reactant side, and these are going on the product side. Yeah? Now, so this is going over here, and these two are coming on the product side. You see how I'm just switching it? So let's just start from there. I'm going to say I have CO3O4. Oop, that was a little O. CO3O4 yields. Now I'm just going to write it from left to right. So I'm just going to say 3 COO plus one half O2. Now here's the thing, guys. If you switch an equation, what's going to happen to the delta H value? Yeah, the sign has to switch. So instead of it being a negative, it's now going to be a positive. And you write that as a positive 177.5 kilojoules. Okay, first part done. Now, we basically do the same process again for the next compound. So I'm going to highlight this one in yellow. I'm now looking for the CO. Or maybe, maybe I'll just highlight this, right? But let's do our little tally. How many COs? I need three of them. So I'm going to put a three. And what side of the equation? On the right side. All right, so now I go back and... Hold on a second, guys. This, I just want to get everything right. I wrote that a little bit too big. It, it's not carbon monoxide, it's CO, lowercase. So here we go. But same types of rules applies. I still want three and I want it on the right side. Okay. So now, scan the two equations. Which one has just the CO in it? It's number one. Here it is, right? Now let's just tally it up. Let's see. I have one CO, because I don't see any number, and it's on the left side. 
Oh, boy. So, oops, why did I put an R? It's on the left side. So the numbers aren't matching, and the sides aren't matching. So we got to do two things here. We have to switch, obviously, right? Because any time that your sides aren't, aren't the same, you have to switch the equation. So that means that now all of this is coming over here, and all of this is coming over here, right? But now how are we going to get the numbers the same? This is by multiplication. If I want 3, what would I have to multiply this 1 by? Yeah, I would have to multiply it by 1. Uh, sorry, by 3, right? So that means that I also have to multiply the whole equation by 3. All of the coefficients are going to change. So if you need to do it in two steps, go for it. But for the simplicity of this video, I'm going to try to combine the two in one. I'm going to switch the equations, and then I'll multiply it by 3. But actually, I think I could do this pretty fast. Let's switch it first, okay? So we're going to switch, and then we're going to uh, times by 3. So let's do the switching first. So it's going to be CO, O, yields, left to right, CO, plus a half, O2, right? That was the switch. And maybe I'll just say that the delta H now, instead of it being negative, it's going to be a positive. 237.9 kilojoules. So the first part is done. Now we have to take this and multiply by 3. So I'm just going to say 3 times. Remember, all the coefficients have to change. So there was 1. 1 times 3 is now 3. Uh, there was 1, but now I times it by 3, so it's 3. And now 3 times 1 over 2, 3 times 1, it would just be 3 over 2, right? You can put the decimal if you want, but I'm just going to keep the fractions. So 3 times 1 over 2, 3 times 1 is 3. You keep the denominator, so it would be 3 over 2. Now, if you multiply the equation by 3, what do you have to do with the delta H? Yeah, you also got to times it by 3. So I'm going to take the 237.9 and times it by 3. So 237.9 times 3, I get now 713.7. .7. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to put 713.7. .7. Okay. Now here's the thing, guys. If you use all the equations, so we use the first equation and we use the second equation, you don't have to do any more. You're done. Okay? So even though there was an O2 left over, don't even pay any mind. As soon as you write down both the equations, you're done. Let's just see if we did it correctly. So now I'm going to add this up. And when I do that, I will cancel like things out that are on opposite sides. So look here, guys. You see how I have three COOs on the top right side? And I have three COOs on the bottom left. They're on opposite sides, and it's the same number. They're both three. So goodbye. They get canceled. Anything else that, get, that can get canceled? No, because they're not on opposite sides. But if we look at the O2s, they're on the same side. When you have the same substance on the same side, that's addition. So I will add 1 half and 3 over 2, right? So now let's just take it from left to right. I have CO3O4 yields 3 COs plus 1 half plus 3 over 2. Remember, when you're adding fractions, the denominator stays the same, and you just add the numerators. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So I'm going to simplify this by saying 2, O2. And look, this is the equation that I wanted. That means I did everything correctly. And then the delta H would be these L delta H's added up. So 177.5 plus 713.7. 891.2 kilojoules. So 
891.2 kilojoules will be absorbed because it's a positive number when this equation is done. And that's it. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. That will help us out tremendously. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers at the moment, which is absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, there are a lot of people out there and a lot of you guys that appreciate education. And we just want to give you the best help that we possibly can. All right. I believe in you. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. And I will see you all in later lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye.